is slamming the investigations into the Biden family, saying if it's a day that ends in why James Comer is lying about President Biden, it's all part of his months long effort to waste time and taxpayer resources and an evidence free wild goose chase that does absolutely nothing to help improve the lives of Americans, which is what Congress should be prioritizing and is only focused on politically smearing the president. I want to bring in Pennsylvania Congressman Dan Muser. He's a member of the Financial Services and Small Business Committees. Congressman, uh, good morning. Your response to Ian Sams and that criticism of these, well, in particular, James Comer's investigation, but, but all the investigations against the Biden family. Yeah, good morning, Cheryl. Uh, I think it's shameless. I, I just think they're just doubling down on lies, and I don't think it. I know it. Here we had uh, uh, President Biden lying during his campaign, lying in office. He knew nothing about his son's business. Now they're just doubling down, stating that Jamie Comer is lying. Everything Chairman Comer is doing is based upon evidence. The evidence is um, uh, extensive, to say the least from bank accounts, to phone calls, to uh, eyewitnesses, to dinners uh, with exchanges occurring of high levels of dollars right after the dinners. Uh, look, if this was a, a, a bank robbery that took place, I mean, Joe Biden was, was in the middle of it. People need to agree to that because that's what happened. He was talking to those who potentially committed the crime, uh, bringing him uh, uh, directly into it. And now throw in, we'll, we'll talk in a moment, I suppose, about the other latest findings with the, with the archives. Look, this thing is ugly. The, the White House is just using the media, 90% of it, to exploit its, uh, its fictional tale. And look, the evidence is going to be meaningful. And you know what? That's why the impeachment inquiry is going to be so important, because maybe finally ABC and CBS and all the others that are ignoring this and completely misinforming the general public uh, we'll, we'll have to report it. I, I want to get to the impeachment issue in just a second, but I want to back up to something else that you said. And you talked about uh, James Comer. I, I will never call him Jamie, but you can. James Comer uh, and the National Archives. He wants those 200 additional emails, those redacted emails. And, and that's what he's searching for now. What do you think is in those emails? And why do you think the National Archives is blocking the release of those emails to James Comer? Well, as I understand it, uh, President Obama and uh, both uh, Biden, as v vice president at the time, have the right to authorize them or not authorize them, which is also um, ridiculous. That's why we, we need subpoena power. That's why we need the impeachment inquiry. But look at some of the emails that we've seen. On December 4th, 2015, the, the infamous meeting took place in Dubai. Prior to that meeting or during it, the official vice presidential office got emails with talking points on what to say about Burisma. And then there was an email back. The vice, the VP has signed off on it. Later that night, 1045 or so that evening, an email from, uh, from uh, Hunter to the, the, the vice president's office. I'm receiving pressure from Burisma. Three days later, the vice president flies to Ukraine, and that's when he threatens the one billion dollars, if the prosecutor doesn't get doesn't get uh, terminated, so okay. I mean this thing is it's 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 obvious, it's blatant, it happened. The only thing they were hoping what they, they would get away with it long enough because it, it seems like it had it was, to come out eventually. Because it was so many uh, years ago, uh, <laughs> likely as well. Um, so I, let's move on to the impeachment issue. You've already brought this up, but I, but I want to ask you about this because there, there's some House conservatives out there that are voicing concerns that House Speaker McCarthy is is dangling a potential Biden impeachment inquiry to delay a reckoning over spending, that CR. So North Carolina Congressman Dan Bishop told Fox News Digital it seems like McCarthy is using the prospect of an inquiry to, quote, attempt to leverage people to vote for a clean continuing resolution or other spending proposals that do not comply with the agreement made when we agreed to support him as speaker. Congressman, yeah. can you shed light on this? Yeah, I, I, I think that's that's way way too uh, simple. I mean, you know, Kevin McCarthy is doing working on um, two big issues as we all are. Uh, I really don't see that they're related. Uh, they can speculate about that. The impeachment inquiry is proving to be necessary because of the mountains of evidence, and we believe a vote will come to the floor. I believe anyway by by the end of September, and it's necessary. It, it simply gives us more subpoena power and able to enforce the requests that we have. 
Now, as far as the, the CR goes, look, there's going to be political games taking place. And, you know, I've been in, con in Congress now four and a half years, and, you know, that, that's just the story. There's political games. We're going we're gonna to issue but, our, uh, our plan, our, our spending cuts. The Senate's going to come back with its uh, uh, requests, followed by a CR. Uh, eventually, I think we're going to have to agree to the CR because, Cheryl, we need to exhaust all options before we engage in a government shutdown that hurts us politically, that hurts the American but those, people, hurts our country. Those political games, though, I have to I have to jump in here. Those political games are why the ratings agencies have put our credit rating as a nation on watch. They specifically have said this was Fitch. They specifically said that because of these the brickmanship that happens every time that the the, the budget comes up and we have to approve a new budget or a CR. Or, or, you know, fund the government, that it, every time it's driven to the last second, that that puts the, the financial health of the United States at risk. It's true, true. But that we hurts did our avoid borrowing the power. We, we were the responsible ones, me meeting the Republicans. If you remember, the Biden White House didn't even want to negotiate. So that was sending credit ratings and starting to re really rattle the economy and the financial world. So we're going to be responsible here. We're simply not ready to pass our 12 appropriations bills in the House. We've only passed one. Uh, the Senate's only passed a couple. So we can't do it by September 30th. Uh, and then we have a very responsible, very transparent uh, working document so the American people see where we're going with the appropriations bills and we get what is in the best interest of the United States of America, not politics, not any party, and, um, uh, and, and, then, and then we vote from there. Okay. But we can't do it by September 30th, uh, again, in my view. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, real quick, uh, Kelly McGee, White's on set. She's got a question for you. Go ahead, Kelly. Congressman, why just an impeachment inquiry? If there's so much evidence to prove Biden's guilt, as you're alleging, why even hold a House floor vote on an impeachment inquiry? Why not introduce articles and have the vote to impeach him right here and right now? Yeah. Well, because I think the American people have not bought into it yet, uh, frankly. I think we need to expose the evidence. It needs to be understood. It needs to be clarified. Uh, it, it, and 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 all so so the impeachment inquiry will allow us to do this. I mean, think about it. Every article I pick up from 90 percent of the media in the newspapers or on TV said there is zero evidence that Joe Biden was involved. That's their talking point. Zero evidence.